There is so much in society, culture, and relationships that attempt to fight for our attention and separation from the one who is the owner of our lives. Every day that we grow should be an opportunity to become closer and more tightly knit with Jesus. Still, there's no denying the fact that there is always something or someone around us who wants to take our eyes off God who should be the priority in our lives. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. There will be offenses, pleasures, or duties attempting to take our gaze off the matters of God and the kingdom. Jesus describes this dilemma in the parable of the seed. The brilliance of Jesus' parables is that they are based on his listeners' ordinary experiences. This first parable uses the story of a farmer who went out to sow his seed. Because most of Jesus' listeners care for their own fields and gardens or tend their landlord's fields, they are well versed in farming skills. Matthew chapter 13. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop, a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. The disciples came to him and asked, Why do you speak to the people in parables? He replied, Because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. Whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have, will be taken from them. This is why I speak to them in parables. Though seeing, they do not see. Though hearing, they do not hear or understand. In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. You will be ever hearing, but never understanding. You will be ever seeing, but never perceiving. For this, people's heart has become calloused. They hardly hear with their ears, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn, and I would heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. For truly I tell you, many prophets and righteous people longed to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop, yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. What is the state of your heart soil? We may all develop a few thorns or amass a few rocks from time to time. Our heart's healthy soil may give liberally to the impoverished. Still, thorny or stony patches suffocate time for praising Him or performing acts of service that come to our attention. The fertile heart soil may be surrounded by a hardened path of intolerance or an unforgiving temperament. There are four things that we can take away from this parable. Number one, listen, the seed snatched away. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. Matthew chapter 13, verse 19. We hear sermons, listen to podcasts, and read devotionals and books, 
But how attentive are we? Or are we just looking for surface nuggets to get us by? Many people are hearing, but who is listening? Number two, receive the seed with no root. The seed that fell on the hard ground reminds us that it is easy to be excited about Christ until we consider changing our life. We have the opportunity to receive Christ's gift of salvation, grace, forgiveness, and strength, but we must fully accept Him and it's a complete transformation from the inside out. Number three, focus the seed among thorns. Distraction suffocates fruitfulness. Number four, respond the seed on good soil. A good crop is the result of labor and rain. We can control the work aspect, but not the weather. Our faith results from disciplined habits, prayer, confessing sins, and reading the Bible, and trust in God. We continue to hear Him, recognize that we cannot control every element on this planet, and have faith in God's goodness. Because Satan is set on twisting every language and relational situation into a falsehood, the Bible encourages us to take every thought captive. It's not easy to follow Christ. The conflict is physical, mental, and spiritual in nature. We must remember Christ's peace, freedom, forgiveness, grace, and love, but it is easy to become distracted. Satan's war against the Word isn't limited to the first hearing of the Word. Even after a person has heard and received the Word with gladness, Satan does everything in his power to take it away and drive the individual to fruitlessness and disaster. It will be much easier to break up the hard-packed regions and root out the thorns and rocks if we maintain our heart soil well tilled with His Word. Even if it comes to the point where we are separated from everything in this world, we must hold on tightly to God and refuse to be torn from His side. This is because He alone is our all in all and the source of our life. We may pretend or act like we don't need Him, but deep down, we will always hunger for Him. Acts chapter 17, verse 27 through 29. God did this so that they would seek Him and perhaps reach out for Him and find Him, though He is not far from any one of us. For in Him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are His offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by human design and skill. God's will is for us to be spiritually mature and planted solidly in our relationship with Him, whether the sun is shining or the rain is falling, so that we won't crumble like a pack of cards when the wind blows. When we are firmly established in God with our roots so deep in Him, we make it harder for the devil to plant any wedge in our relationship with God. To be rooted and grounded in Christ should be our goal. Just as Colossians chapter 2 verse 6 through 10 says, So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in Him, rooted and built up in Him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy which depends on human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of this world rather than on Christ. This is why our focus must always be Jesus everywhere and at every point. Remember when Jesus corrected Martha about being busy with things that were not as important as the Word of God, unlike Mary who was so focused. Luke chapter 10, verse 38 through 42. As Jesus and his disciples were on the way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. 
When we are so tightly knitted with God, and we love Him with all that is in us, we make it harder for a separation. This is why one of the core commandments of Scripture is love for God in totality, not because God can't live without us, but because we can't live without Him. Joshua chapter 22, verse 5 But be careful to keep the commandment and the law that Moses the servant of the Lord gave you, to love the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to Him, to keep His commands, to hold fast to Him, and to serve Him with all your heart and with all your soul. This is also repeated in the New Testament to confirm that it didn't pass away with the old laws. Mark chapter 12, verse 33. To love Him with all your heart, with all your understanding, and with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. Paul was one man who learned to stick with God no matter what was going on. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 So when we could stand it no longer, we thought it best to be left by ourselves in Athens. We sent Timothy, who is our brother and co-worker in God's service in spreading the gospel of Christ, to strengthen and encourage you in your faith, so that no one would be unsettled by these trials. For you know quite well that we are destined for them. In fact, when we were with you, we kept telling you that we would be persecuted. And it turned out that way, as you well know. For this reason, when I could stand it no longer, I sent to find out about your faith. I was afraid that in some way the tempter had tempted you and that our labors might have been in vain. But Timothy has just now come to us from you and has brought good news about your faith and love. He has told us that you always have pleasant memories of us and that you long to see us just as we also long to see you. Therefore, brothers and sisters, in all our distress and persecution, we were encouraged about you because of your faith. For now we really live since you are standing firm in the Lord. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy we have in the presence of our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you again and supply what is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus clear the way for us to come to you. May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else just as ours does for you. May he strengthen your hearts so that you will be blameless and holy in the presence of our God and Father when our Lord Jesus comes with all his holy ones. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for the unity you have given me with the Holy Trinity. I am grateful for your desire to see me rooted, established, and planted in you. In the name of Jesus, I ask for the strength to hold on to you so that I will never be separated from the source and rock of my life. Amen.